This is the American Dream, Dusted Rhodes, son of a plumber, daddy, and you're listening to the Bob Culture Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very special full gear edition of the BCP right now. You're listening to a cover of Fozzie's Judas by my good friends, the Damn Nation. Guys, thank you as always for letting me use your tune Check them out on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff. What a stellar band, guys. We always appreciate you letting us use your tunes. But right now, I got to introduce our all-star stellar panel. Please welcome back to the show, Lay Editor-in-Chief. He is cold like December snow. Hashtag dad and sick. Hashtag you know why, Bill. Please welcome back to the show. Mr. Bill Biden, what's up, bro? This year to be the Judas in your mind, brother. You know that. The only time I've ever positive on the Bob Fulton podcast is on the AEW, so let's do this, man. Good to see you, man. It's good to see that that smile. I see the power of positivity over there on you tonight, man. It's going to be great. I'm just trying to avoid the chaos of the world right now by just talking about wrestling. <laughs> Uh, I, th- I think we all are, man, but but I digress. Um, and guys, please welcome back to the show. Now, making her debut for the predictions panel. You know her from Big Mama's Dog Training at LLC. I have legit seen her dog, Baymax, close a cabinet. Please welcome back to the show, wrestling aficionado, Miss Nicole Costanza. Nicole, what's up? How are you? Good. How you doing? Do it. You know what? 2020 has been tough. We're still kicking out at a two and a half over here, but we're hanging in there. Yeah, doing, gotta doing keep the, kicking at it too. That's right. You you know the deal. And uh, you know to round off this stellar stellar panel, he is our neighbor from the north. You know him from the All Elite Pod, the very handsome, the good brother, Mr. Kyle Masters. What's up, bro? How are you? Too sweet, brother. Got you, man. That's it. Let's do it right now. <laughs> Got it, man. Thanks for coming on, man. You you have a stellar show. Um, you know I'm I'm you know talking to Tiff. I'm like. We got to get Kyle on. So, you know, she, she signed off on it. No, I'm just messing with you, man. Um, no, thanks for coming no, on. She I, signed she, off on it. She you, always you have, thunder. It's okay. You have so I'm much used heat to right it by now, now, Rob. You have so much heat not having Tiffany on this podcast. You can't yeah. do anything in life without having heat with Tiffany, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Story of my life. But uh, but I digress. But, guys, let's get into it. Uh, as always, we do start with ladies first here on the BCP. So we're going to start with what I believe is on the kickoff show and recently announced, uh, I think hours after Dynamite last night, uh, Serena Deeb, uh, the NWA Women's World Champion, taking on Miss Allison K. Bill, I'll throw it to you first. Your thoughts on this one. Do we have a title change? Uh, this is an unusual one. Uh, first off, uh, if uh, I was listening to the Cody um, uh, media call today, and he did not really commit to whether she would... Allison Kay has been signed to AEW. Uh, I know she just, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, uh, she just kind of came to terms with NWA and they're kind of donezo for the time being. Uh, so this is weird that she's challenging for the title that a company she just left. But regardless, if AEW is going to sign her, great signing. Uh, I think the, the women's division has needed a really strong veteran presence and she's got a great character. Really good wrestler. She's got the MMA background. So she's awesome. I don't think we see a title change here. Serena Deeb's got a great story that AEW has not really dove into just yet, and I think they should. Uh, I think she's going to hold on to it, and um, I think there is a future. Well, I think there's going to be a challenger for the, this title uh, b- from someone else on this card because of another uh, result on the show. But I'll keep that to myself till then. But yeah, I'm going to say Serena Deeb. It's a little too early, I think, to take it off of uh, of her. She just won like what two, three weeks ago. So yeah, I'm going to go Serena uh, for this one. And this one's going to be really good. I think probably one of the best buy-in matches that AEW's had. Very so well said. NWA power in her Twitter bio, if that means anything. What was that? Mm. She still has NWA power in her Twitter bio, so I don't know if that means anything. Because I thought there was a whole thing where she was just like, "Yeah, I'm not." I'm done with the NWA. Like she might be, she's posting a bunch of indie tours that she's about to do. So who knows? Well, we'll find out for sure. And Bill, I'm pretty much just going to copy and paste what you said. I I very much agree with that. Uh, I don't see her losing the title here. Like we always say here on the BCP, the real winners, the fans, Um, Kyle, your thoughts on this one. 
I was excited when they first announced this. Um, I'm loving the partnership that they got between NWA and AEW that uh, what they've been doing lately, especially with Thunder Rosa. Um, I've I think she's she's keeping an eye on this match. She did tweet out about uh, a tweet that Allison K put out about uh, two AEW people going for the AEW title on Dynamite last week, and then it, Thunder Rosa going and chirping Alice uh, Allison K for it and saying, "Well, this tweet didn't age well." So I, my gut's telling me that Thunder Rose is keeping an eye on this match. I know there's the, all the rumors that are out there and what she's been doing, saying like, "Oh, am I going to WWE? Am I going to AEW? Am I going? Am I staying with NWA?" Then Billy Corgan coming out and saying that, "Well, she's actually signed till next year." Um, I don't know. I I never believe anything until I see it. <laughs> Anyone can go out there and say it, what they want. Billy Corgan could be playing us for all we know. Um, I think she's gonna have an eye on this match though. Either. I, I kind of I wrote down here for my prediction show later that I think maybe Thunder Rosa kind of is in the building for this. I think they need it's, it's it's if this is the only buy-in match, how can you not have something big happen to get people to buy the pay-per-view? You can't. I don't know if this is a, a good enough match. It's going to be a good match, but I don't think it's good enough to sell the pay-per-view. If you're not going to have something else with it. You know what I mean? There there's got to be unless they have another pre-show match in the works that's going to be announced on the day of something. I think's got to happen in this match for me to believe that I want to buy the pay-per-view. So I wrote down that Thunder Rose is going to have some sort of impact on this match in some way, um, whether it's challenging the winner after coming out and having a stare down or some, something like that. But uh, I, I agree with, uh, with uh, the prediction of Serena Deeb coming out with uh, the title the title bell at the end. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a safe bet. Really good uh, theories, like I always say here on the show. I wish it was like around the horn because Kyle just got three <laughs> points right there on that. Oh, that was really well said. I'd also like uh, to point out every time Rob says that, it's never to me. Never to me. <laughs> the, the pillar of this freaking podcast never gets I mean, a point. No, nothing clicked for me. It's just like be on the show, Bill. And I'm like, right. I'm just the enhancement. I'm just the enhancement talent. What can I tell he, you? He, He's cold like December snow, like I said. Nicole, are we going uh, for the, uh, you know, unanimous decision here? Yeah, I got to agree with everyone. I don't think they're going to do a title change, but I really think they're going to put on a good match just to make Kay look really good in case she does decide to sign with AEW. So I'm really, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I like it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. You know, the women's division. I, I like the AEW women's division, and I want to keep seeing, you know, this division grow. Um, you know, I love that there's opportunity right now. The world came to a stop, but we're, we're seeing our friends pop up on Dark, on NXT, whatever it may or may not be. So we're rooting for everybody right now. Um, it's going to be awesome. And AEW is doing, you know, knocking it out of the park with that. So I'm very excited for that. Let's talk about the main show. And we'll talk a little bit about freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy taking on the Dark Orders. John Silver, we'll throw it to you, Kyle. Oh, man, I am actually looking extremely forward to this match. Just Hell based yeah. off how entertaining it's going to be between these two guys. We've seen what we obviously know what what Orange Cassidy is all about. But how John Silver has come out of his shell, like in in the last couple of weeks with the Dark Order, whether it been BT or what we're seeing on Dynamite or Dark, he's just shown us how how much of an entertaining factor he is. But also has that great wrestling ability at the same time. When he's in the match and he's actually going, he can actually show that he's probably one of the top guys in the Dark Order that can you know that can go in the ring. Um, I think the Dark Order has been a lot, has had a lot of momentum lately, uh, just from seeing Dark, just from seeing. Uh, uh, sorry, I got con- <laughs> I got confused there. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot going on. No worries. Um, also, I also seeing through uh, a BTE. There's been a lot of momentum with the Dark Order, so I think this is going to be a very very fun match. Uh, both guys have that again that entertaining fact entertainment factor, and also have that. Um, wrestling uh factor as well so i have orange cassidy going over unfortunately i know john silver's had all this momentum but i still see uh orange cassidy needs a bounce back he he hasn't bounced back since uh he hasn't won against a match since all out against jericho in that mimosa match so i kind of feel like he needs a w here but they're still going to put on a really good match very well said, man. And that's the thing I like about this pay-per-view. Like, I'm having a lot of trouble picking the winners here, which is something I love about AEW. It's it's not like, you know, automatic picks here. So it's confusing. Now, Nicole, I believe you're an Orange Cassidy f- fan because I'm always seeing the, the gifts in your post. Uh, do you think Orange Cassidy is going to win this one? 
I do. I adore Orange Cassidy, and I do agree with with Kyle said. I think he does need a win. Silver has improved a lot as the weeks have gone on, but Cassidy needs a win. But I think they're going to put on a great match. They're both going to look great, and it's definitely going to be entertaining. So that's another match I'm looking forward to. Yeah, everyone's really looking forward to this one. Um, Bill, you, you seemed excited about this one as well. <laughs> Giving my accidental thumbs up. Yeah, these two guys have been around the horn, you know, whether it's Chikara under different personas, whether it's been beyond and all over the Indies, these guys have worked together. They know how to they know how to work together really well. I've seen some of their stuff together. And um yeah, Orange Cassidy, I think it's a slam dunk for for him to win because like uh like Kyle said, like he needs the bounce back. He really does. You know, losing to Cody, uh, losing to Brody. And uh, I think this is putting him on the road to possibly Miro, as kind of hinted at on Dynamite this week. Or my whole thing is I think eventually um, he and Brody Lee are going to tangle once again. And that, uh, as Tony Giovanni kind of, uh, Skiavon, I should say, uh, <laughs> hinted at uh, on one of the post shows that uh, gold... TNT gold might be around the waist of Orange Cassidy in the very near future. So I believe that. I believe TNT has supposedly come out and said how much they love the guy. He's a huge rating straw for AEW. Putting the belt on him, I think, is a no-brainer eventually. But I think he's going to beat John Silver here. And John Silver loses nothing because he's Johnny Hungry. He's he's always hungry for more. He's just It, it plays perfectly into the BTE character. He's going to get slapped around by Brody Lee, who will come out and curse at him and stuff like that. Um, wouldn't it be surprised if Brody Lee shows up after the match, maybe? Uh, but I don't know. It's it's interesting whether they're going to pivot him towards the Dark Order or be your own Kip Sabian. So I, I'm not 100% sure right now. But yeah, I think this is an Orange Cassidy uh, win for sure. Yeah, That's very for sure a lot there. Sorry. Yeah, no, all good, for man. Sure. <laughs> for sure, dude. Uh, you actually, you got a point shoes on that. Makes sense. <laughs> you got a point on that one, Bill, for the uh, the Miro <laughs> swerve. First I like, time I like ever. It. No, <laughs> but um, that's interesting, and we'll, we'll take it right here. You mentioned that TNT title. Let's talk about that match. Now, I was giving you guys softballs with, with these other matches. I I'm really having a lot of trouble. Uh, you guys are gonna have to sway me on some of these. As a matter of fact, a lot of trouble picking winners on these. So let's talk about Cody taking on Darby Allen for the TNT title. Uh, we'll throw it to Nicole first. So I'm thinking ugh, this is so difficult. I love both of them. I absolutely adore Darby Allen, but I'm thinking Cody retains only because I know Allen hasn't really wrestled in a while. So I'm thinking what they're going to do is keep the title on Cody. And then as the weeks go on, slowly build up Allen again. So that way in the future, even if it's not a pay-per-view, one of the dynamites, Cody and Allen have another match and maybe Allen strips Cody of the title. They, I just want to see them build up Darby Allen again. So my pick for right now is Cody, but we'll see down the line what happens with Darby Allen. I, I like that. I agree with that. Like uh, he's lost a little bit of steam, been off TV here and there. Uh, I'm, I'm always about the climb. I'm always about climbing that ladder. So that's a very interesting theory but does he does he win here i thought during the original tournament for that title that darby was yeah. for sure going to be the winner so i do kind of yeah. like that that rebuild that reboot that you're saying right there this is tough for me kyle your thoughts i'm actually gonna go opposed i think darby takes it in this one i think for sure that this is the time to do it and i uh there's one thing i want to talk about and it's just again it's I love, I love talking about rumors as much as I don't want to sit here and believe rumors. And, and again, I'm one of those people that wait until it happens. The rumor of the sting coming up lately with what in terms of Darby Allen and what, while what Darby Allen's been doing lately, you've seen what he's been doing. He's, he's, he's pulling that WCW sting looking from the rafters, that single light on him. And I'm like, okay, so is, is sting going to make an appearance in, 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 in AEW and, and you know, maybe not, necessarily manage Darby this obviously would probably be a one-off I can't Darby doesn't really need a manager unless they have stuff planned in these crazy vignettes that he does all the time with Sting that'd be really cool to see what they would do together um but uh I think this probably is the time that they're they're gonna they're gonna change hands I kind of I kind of feel like Darby I think is deserving to this point again like you said that the first tournament it kind of all the signs were pointing at that time I felt the same that you did as I thought Darby was going to win it there. I think this time around, I, I think they, they're not going to, they're not going to waste time 
it's time to start building your newer stars in the company. You've had over over a year to assert, you know, your dominance, Cody. But you know, the time this is the time, and it, I think it's Darby's time to shine now with the TNT belt. Oh man, three more points right there for my man Kyle. He's killing it today. Uh, that's why you're here, bro. And and bringing up Sting, that's another great point. Um, you know, you see the rumors swirling, like Bill said, those rumors are always fun. I don't I see. I didn't even, other... I didn't even think hear about Sting. Oh, no. Yeah, no, there's been some rumors, bro, uh, the past couple of days. And I just don't see the correlation between the two. Ca- yes, they both have face paint. But like, I don't see the correlation. <laughs> That's between... it. Sold. <laughs> yeah. I don't see the correlation between the characters. And like, Kyle, you hit it right on the head. I don't think Darby necessarily needs that because um, it's not like he needs a mouthpiece because that quiet demeanor is is kind of who he is. So I think, you know, giving him like a Taz or something like, like it doesn't make sense or a sting or anything like that. Um, so that's very well said. That's really interesting. I'm I'm having trouble here because when Cody came back and won that belt right back, I certainly didn't think he was just going to come back and win it. You know, they were teasing like a big heel turn. You know, the, like I always say on the show, the, the hair color always indicates some sort of face heel turn, as we've learned in this business. Um, but I thought Cody winning the belt would mean, you know, we're seeing, you know, more of those weekly indie guys coming in on um, Dynamite and challenging. Obviously, they haven't been doing that. They're doing something different, which is fine. I think I'm going to go Darby here. I'm going to go Darby to to win it here. I agree with what Nicole said, though. I, I think it makes more sense for him to build. Also, if they are going to bring in Sting, then it would make sense for him to lose. I'm going to say this is the title change on the show. At least one title. Ch- I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Darby. Bill, what do you got? Well, I think sorry to cut you off, Bill. But yeah, right please. before Bill gets into it here, because I really want to hear his answer, um, <laughs> is uh, Team Taz did call out Darby yeah. Allen this week on Dynamite. Ding, ding, ding. So well, uh, that's exactly where chance. I'm going to go yeah. <laughs> is I think that's why Darby Allen's going to win is because if Taz's promo as you know, he's always talking about Darby and, you know, he's always talking <laughs> about that bastard Darby, which I made him Taz sound like he's from Boston. <laughs> he's from Southie. But my anyway, he's in my car. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, um, he always calls out Darby because he's always, he's always miffed at him, but he called out, he went in hard on Cody. So, this is just Bill doesn't want to think about life. Let's think of crazy wrestling stuff. So it's like I was thinking I'm like they're gonna make their presence known on the show. If if I'm thinking like a, a strategy, it would be they help Darby win the match because Taz thinks that both or either Ricky or Brian, especially Brian, who needs to push more than Ricky uh, at this point, because Brian Cage, I mean, built him up from Moxley, built right back down. He's kind of been you know, meandering. He's just kind of just like, whatever. Taz, I could see saying, I know Brian could beat Darby where e- that easier than Cody. So that's like Darby wins the title. And then Cody goes off to fight maybe Ricky. Or when you were saying Sting, I was just like, well, there's no bigger Sting mark than Cody. He's literally said that. I'm like, that's his mystery partner on a team of some sort to fight the Dark Order. That I could see that if they, because they've also at the end of Dynamite this week, they kind of tease like the Dark Order was like cor- trying to corner those guys. And um, I and I actually don't think it's going to be Brian or Ricky who takes out Darby. It's going to be Will Hobbs. Uh, I think Will Hobbs is going to be the guy who turns. <laughs> and if we're going to just keep fantasy booking Team Taz, put Layla Hirsch in Team Taz because oh, that's man, what sweet. you need. Um, but yeah, I think this is Darby's time. Darby is the Sabu of AEW. He's the special attraction. He is he's more than earned it through his physical physicality. I think it's smart that they use him in in spurts because his act could get old. Kept him strong through his promos and you know, he's getting like, you know, Tony Hawk and Steve O to be on his promos and stuff like that, which is pretty wild. So I think Darby's gonna take this one and uh, eventually I think it's gonna be Darby. It'll go then, then it'll be Darby and Brody. Brody's going to take it from him. Orange Cassidy takes it from Brody. Okay. I rue the day to whoever takes it from Orange Cassidy. But- I, I, I love the possibilities here. Um, and you guys bring it up because I'm going, I'm going back and forth here, Bill. I know you hate it when I change my picks. I'm going to go. I'm not, it's every predictions panel. I'm not, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm numb to it. I'm going to go. 
This is the one. I, I was going to go this way somewhere else. I'm going no contest on this one. This is the one where they – Bill is shaking his head. This is one where they interfere. We have a great match. Team Taz ruins it. We're going to get that Wednesday night. Cody and Darby taking on Team Taz, and it'll go from there. there. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go no contest. Final gonna, answer, Cody. Obviously, are they going to rib Survivor Series because it's happening this month? <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, man, I would. I mean, they they ripped Halloween Havoc and the Great American Bash away from Dusty's kids, so why not? Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, let's you know, a lot of titles on the line here, so let's talk about Sheeta uh, taking on Nyla Rose again for the title. Nyla has held the title in the past. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Does not does Nyla become what would be, I believe, the first time ever two time AW yeah. Women's Champion? If I'm correct, that would be correct. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Or does she to continue this run here? I will throw it to Nicole first on this. I have no idea. I don't know either. Right. I'm so torn. I just feel like, especially with, I feel like Vicky's going to interfere somehow. I know she's going to interfere with the match. Uh, I'm not sure if titles change hands, though. Uh, I got to go. I think she is going to hold on to it. I really think she's going to hold on to it for a little while. I just, I, I don't know. That's this is a tough one, but Sheeta, Sheeta's gonna hold on to it. Yeah, it, it's really, really tough. I kind of want to hear what all you guys have to say first. Uh, Kyle, what do you got? You know, it's it's tough to judge this match when the feud's like two weeks old. I mean, I'll give it to them. They did. I'll give them props this week on Dynamite that they did a really good job of you know amplifying it, and intensifying it for Saturday's matchup with the whole brawl at the end, like. Nyla looked like she clocked her, man. That was that was a huge right hand. Um, other than that, I guess the story in the history between these two writes itself. So in a way, they didn't really need that big of a story going into it because the history is there between these two in the past, so they can play off that. Um, I think they still need to keep building Sheeta up more. I think uh, for her, if she's going to be one of the top girls, I mean, she is at this moment – one of the top in the division, you want to keep her up there. You want her to keep and hold on to that momentum. It's not the right time for her to lose the belt yet. I think once they start building the rest of the division, there will come a time and place, hopefully by revolution or maybe beforehand, if they have like a special night of dynamite, um, there's a time for her to drop the belt to somebody who deserves it right now. I mean, they're solely building a couple of others. Like Abaddon's been getting momentum. Um, for, they 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 they're getting this. They have this big faith in Red Velvet. She's like getting a lot of more uh, dynamite matches, so I think they're grooming her a little bit. Um, Anna Jay, I'd like to see a little bit more out of her as well. So they have been slowly but surely building their division. I think we just need to see start seeing more storylines within it, and and more women's stories, so that someone can be believable to take that title off of Sheeta. So I still have Sheeta coming out on top and winning this match. It'll still be a really good match. These two have. Showing they've put on probably the best women's matches in AEW since it started. So can't take anything away from that. Hopefully the partnership with NWA is going to help in some way to just continue transcending Sheeta into the top and staying and keeping her at the top. Dude, you are knocking it out of the park tonight, bro. Yeah, that's like, why I wear the shirt. I am elite. I love, I love the shirt. We'll get the shameless promo at the end, man. It's like it's like you've talked about uh, AEW before. It's crazy, man. Um you guys sway just you you first two you guys swayed me i i'm gonna go sheeta just because nyla has kind of been primarily you know popping up on dark here and there um not in the forefront as much as sheeta has been obviously i think sheeta holds on to it for a little while longer and we see some new challengers and um nyla doesn't need to to get the belt back right away bill do you think nyla takes it no because i think the money is is sheeta and Britt baker when Britt Baker finally takes the title. And I think that's a revolution. And I think it's, um, I think they're being very slow with Britt coming back physically because of uh, her injury history. And right now she's she's one of the best women in AEW is from a character standpoint, for sure. I mean, look where Britt Baker was a year ago compared to where she is today. I mean, she's like, it's night and day, it really is. I think this is a good match. I always thought this, this feud was kind of told backwards. I really thought... Nyla should have won a double or nothing, and that whole summer was the build of she, the the summer of Sheeta, where she builds herself back up. She wins the belt at uh, All Out, although we would have been deprived of that. I, I think the best match in AEW Women's History between Sheeta and Thunder Rosa, and I mean, I, I'm not trading that in for a better, you know, feud between Sheeta and Nyla. 
Uh, I think Nyla is going to move on to Serena Deeb, and I think that's where we're going to see eventually they, those two clash. And I think there's more money in that, especially with Vicky Guerrero, like them trying to bully her. I mean, I also would love to see an Allison K, Nyla Rose stable, like the undo- the indomitable badasses, you know. And you I know, love have that. I love yeah. the sorry the Nyla and Serena Deeb thing, and they should have Serena Deeb defending. She should hold on to that NWA belt. Have it. Have defending it on NWA and have Vicky appear on NWA oh, absolutely. as well. Yeah, <laughs> try mean, to it, or that was feud. it UWN? U- Re- 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 whatever it's called on Tuesdays they do. I can never remember United oh. Wrestling Network. Yeah, God, I can't. I'm it's like a weekly, weekly pay per view. Yeah, but I, I, just, I, I really think you could do that. And I thought they were going to do that with with Sheeta. I thought Sheeta was going to show up on that show and be like, I'm going to challenge Thunder Rosa for the title. Then she does the honors for Thunder Rosa loses on, on that show, you know, so one and one, you know, sign of respect. No one, no one's more superior, you know, because they're two of the top women in the world. But I, I think I would love to see like Nyla and Allison Kay and then Serena Deeb has someone with her. Like you could really stretch it out and make more of this. But yeah, to me, it's Sheeta just because I think, the the long con here is a very long, very long run for Britt Baker as champion. Love it, and Bill, go. man, you get yeah, there it is. You're you're getting some <laughs> nice. You're getting some points again, Bill. I love what you said. That's awesome. Oh, and as we wait till you get to my uh, wait till you get to the Young Bucks match, I think it deduct all the points for the ridiculous things I'm going to say. Uh, oh man, <laughs> well you know what? I think we're going to do that because we're doing the titles right now. Let's <laughs> let's get there. And again, I look at this card. And I, I, this may be the toughest predictions panel we have ever done yeah. because picking the winners here for almost all of these match, uh, in, in my eyes personally, is very difficult. So let's talk about FTR taking on the Young Bucks for the AEW tag belts. We'll throw it back to Kyle first. I mean, the dream match is finally here. I mean, this dates back to those original tweets. Like these guys, this t- this match itself is a match in the making and. We're getting all that here. I think the big factor is, though, here is, unfortunately, they've had to run into a roadblock with Matt's injury, which apparently is legit, that he suffered earlier in the summer. I guess he's been dealing with a potential torn MC, and he's been wrestling ever since, and the guy's just a trooper. I don't know how he's doing that, and I guess they've played a storyline as that. That's what we've seen with the the ankle injury the last couple of weeks on Dynamite, so... Uh, I just I wish they were fully healthy. I still think they're going to put on some sort of epic clash together. I just I kind of a little bit. I'm like 20 percent bummed out that Matt's not fully healthy and we can't get that full both teams healthy. You know, once in like the first time these guys are ever going to face each other, especially for the AW championship or tag team championships. Um, I think it's it's. Uh, Without the antics and the storylines going into this, it should be a banger. The, the, we should have probably one of the greatest tag team matches of the year in AEW, probably of, of all time in AEW. Um, I can honestly see it going either way. This is so hard for me to pick. I, I was going back and forth myself all day today. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that obvious. I'm, I'm sticking with FTR, and I think they're going to do a hell of a job of retaining those title belts, and I think this is it. I don't think the Young Bucks are... Can't forget about that stipulation that they copied Cody Rhodes and... You know, if they don't win, they can't face, they can't challenge for the AEW Tag Team Championships. I think they're going to stick on that road. I think the Young Bucks are going to put themselves into that. I know it's a weird pick, but I'm sticking with my gut. My gut's usually right 70% of the time. So I'm, I'm sticking with the FTR with this pick, but I'm very, very, I'm like a little bit unsure about that one. Oh, always go with your gut, man. I love it. And the injury coming into play, uh, which I'll touch on in a little bit. Nicole, do you think um, the Young Bucks finally get the AEW tag team titles in this one? No. Um, this one was also very, very difficult. I remember the whole Twitter battle, and I became very excited because I'm like, oh, my God, we're one day hopefully going to get Young Bucks versus you know, FTR. Now we have it, but I do agree with what Kyle said due to injuries that have plagued the teams and whatever. Um, the match is still going to be great. It's going to be fantastic, but the injuries are going to limit them. But I think FTR is going to retain, even if the young bucks lose, it's not like they have anything really to lose. 
as they're still one of the best tag teams in the world, in my opinion. So FTR retains and yeah, that's, that's it. All right. I, and I have to agree with both of you, Bill. I see you getting ready over there, so I'll <laughs> I'll let you take it home. I'll get this in real quick. I will agree with you guys that FTR does retain here. Um, you know, there there were some issues, obviously, or opinions, I should say, about the build for this match that I can definitely agree with. It's it's just been brewing for such a long time. I was a little confused, honestly, by the build uh, for this match, especially when it came to like the young bucks kind of. I don't want to say heel turn, but whatever's going on with them, you kind of almost have again that heel heel kind of mix it was a little confusing to me obviously when the news broke uh the other day of the injury i mean it makes this pick a lot easier for me because you know why are you putting on a belt the belts on a guy who probably needs to go in and get some work done or some surgery or whatever does don't want to injure it further but hopefully we do get a good match um i always say this to bill i always say like sometimes you drag out these feuds too long and, you know, I'm just like, someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to get hurt because you, you just drag it out a little too long. And, you know, like people go on the shelf. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's just a safe bet on this one. FTR, uh, you know, I hate not seeing the Bucks hold those titles yet. But FTR retains here. And hopefully uh, what's going to be an awesome match. Bill, the floor is yours. Okay. I do not think there's going to be a winner in this match. Oh. I think given oh. Matt Jackson's injury, it will inhibit this match in some way uh could it be a time limit draw very much could be buck said if we lose this match and i really also think besides the injury i think they really want to save this one for a live crowd whenever that could be oh, yeah i didn't know what that was but um it's like that a fly came in. it was like a buzzer saying <laughs> wrong you're wrong bill um <laughs> I didn't even hook up the buzzer. That's your negative points from... Uh, oh, from no. Bob. The negative points come in now because I had one night, uh, I, I channeled my inner hangman, Adam Page, as I do most Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays. A lot of days. Uh, guys, it's 2020. This year is terrible. Um, so, and I'm Irish, so it's like a risky disaster. <laughs> I was thinking, what's a... Like, a no decision, if it's not going to be a, a, a time limit draw, a no decision... AEW doesn't have no decisions. They try not to do, you know, run-in bullshit finishes. Or disqualifications, I should say. But what would be a cool way for that to happen? Now, if you were watching some of the promos that uh, were leading up to Full Gear, it's just like, look at all the surprises that came in. And, you know, you have Matt Hardy, you're seeing Matt Cardona, um, all, Miro, all these signings. So I'm just like, huh, what happens? Mr. Tony Khan, big ECW fan. Lights out. Lights on. Oh, shit, there's somebody in the ring. And who could that be? What happens if the Forbidden Door just gets kicked in? What happens if two guys from Florida, the Gorillas of Destiny, who ain't doing anything, they're not oh. going to be in Japan this Saturday. That's right. What happens if they, who have interjected themselves in this feud throughout the years, saying, uh, we're the best tag team in the world. What if they cause this match maybe maybe no, no contest but a disqualification for F, to help fdr or whatever they come out they lay waste to both teams they take the tag belts and say boys if you want these back we'll see you in japan in january oh, okay and yeah. there you go the gorillas of destiny can go to new japan with the AEW tag team titles ftr who wants to go wrestle in new japan that's a hell of a draw for Wrestle Kingdom. I mean, you're already gonna get you're already gonna get Moxley over there. You're yeah. probably I don't think you're gonna get Jericho over there because they haven't built anything for him yet. But it's a weird wild theory. I had some other teams. I'm like, oh, what happens if it was the Good Brothers? What happens if it was the North? What happens if they it was the Bristol? They just signed that team, did they not? They just like two days ago. They just signed some random tag team. No, uh, they signed I, Max Caster and Anthony Bowens. I've never heard of them. Anthony, oh, well, for sure. you know, uh, there are things, areas. like Rob, okay. Rob, us three. Um, what was up with that? Why? What? What? That was random, though. Like I Anthony never. Bo he's, Anthony Bowens, Bowens is, is good. He's good. Bowens though. is the guy that WWE has given up on or passed over. I should say Max Caster is. They're both creative pro guys. So it's just it, it's a weird way that they're signing that days before full gear. Now it does does those two have anything to do with this match? They're saying those guys are like kind of they're going to groom them on dark. 
they in, in a PW Insider interview, Tony Khan said, "I've signed up some people to developmental deals." Yeah. If the and, gorillas thing comes through, though, I think it doesn't happen during the match. I think it's gonna be one of those things that happens before the match due to Matt's injury, and they're gonna be like, "Yeah, hey, Matt, like Matt can't compete," and then something like that. And then um, they'll probably give the time that they are gonna be given. I can see them splitting it up to. Like Kenny and Hangman, that's probably going to be in a very, very long match. Moxley yeah. and uh, Kingston. Kingston can sure have an, a Jared long match. MJF, yeah, if the cinematic match between Sammy and Matt Hardy is longer than predicted, maybe they'll throw it some alluded time towards them. So I really like that theory, though. That's going to be my and goal. I, and I actually checked where they are. There's no social media activity. They've talked about AEW, wanted to work there. All those guys have talked about working together. They're all friends. The, the guy from New Japan who didn't want to do the work with them is gone too. That all of a sudden he's gone and Tanahashi's saying hey to Chris Jericho. New Japan's getting referenced a lot. They said we'll never do a co-bannered show but um, p- wrestling people lie. Never seen and also movie. you don't have to do a co-bannered show. They could just have a New Japan talent on there. I think that's the only cool way to get out of this. Matt gets, in, Matt gets healthy and then you save this for the live crowd. You run this back in six months if well whenever we can have live audiences again because and if it happens i will lose my mind I'd and i pay to go to be honest <laughs> yeah it would be amazing uh but yeah so that's my prediction it's going to be a a um, no contest slash draw there will be no winner i will say very very safe bet as i i believe kyle and bill have just become best friends <laughs> um at, <laughs> as we as as we speaking of becoming best friends or, or maybe best enemies, let's throw it to um you know Y two J. I know he's Jericho, but for the uh, for the, the initials here, every nickname. Yes, Y two J taking on MJF. I mean, I gotta ask you guys this first and foremost. What did you guys think of the musical number? And then of course, who's gonna win this? I believe if MJF wins, he does get to join. Yes, the Dark Order is the stipulation. No, no, he joins uh, the inner circle. Does not join the Dark uh, Order. Dark, I'm sorry. There's a uh, lot of facts. There's a lot of facts. And he had to join the Dark Order. <laughs> yeah, twist. That's the big twist. Got to drink no- the Kool Aid. <laughs> oh, there it is. Nicole, um, where are you going with this one? Uh, MJF or Jericho? Ugh. Again, oh. this is another tough one. God, there's so many tough, tough matches to call. I'm thinking, I don't know. This is just my theory. I think MJF is going to win and he is going to join the inner circle. I adore the inner circle. I think they've been one of the best factions in wrestling, probably within the last year. But MJF, he is fantastic on the mic. And I'm not saying Jericho's not bad on the mic at all. But I'm thinking maybe MJF would be more of their mouthpiece per se in the inner circle. Mm -hmm. And I think once he joins, the inner circle is going to be unstoppable, in my opinion. That's just me, though. So I'm I'm leaning towards MJF. Yeah, that's that's a really good choice of uh, late dinner debonair, though. Oh, yeah. What do you think of the musical number, uh, Nicole? Oh, my God, it was wonderful. (laughs) <laughs> I I thought I, I'll say this about the musical number um like you know the execution maybe could have been like a little better but and that's just me nitpicking I thought like them sitting down and saying hey let's do this we'll do it this way you know we'll have the dancers we'll have the curtain move I, I thought it was you know even with like they're holding the girls they just drop them like all the little things like that I really appreciate it. I appreciate the showmanship. I appreciate them. You know, um, MJF can sing. Obviously, you know, we know Jericho can sing with Fozzy. Um, them actually doing the legit harmonies. I thought it was really, really fun. I'd love to see more of that, which also makes me think, to Nicole's point, that MJF does win here. I think this is a big win for MJF, who's essentially been undefeated for the most part in AEW. I'm not an MJF guy because he's been very rude to me on several occasions. Um, and he's okay. And I'm, I'm like, I feel like I can't say this. I'm going to get like heat on Twitter or whatever, but like, he's okay in the ring. He's all right. But uh, I'm going to go MJF for the big win here. Bill, we'll throw it to you. Uh, first off, a late dinner debonair was like, you know, my high school musical theater career in my like, 30 plus year love of pro wrestling oh. crashing into one. And I was just like, this is everything I needed in life and more. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. It was stupid. It was dumb. And it was 
it was beautiful. No one's to- you dropped the f bomb, so I just I just held back. I didn't want to be that guy. It was beautiful. I loved it, and it's ridiculous. And if it was anyone else, it would have been terrible. But those two guys, it was perfect. It was it was like Sean Spears and Cody. That would have been garbage. <laughs> if it was Dustin Rhodes as Gold Dust, though, maybe. Uh, like Dustin Rhodes and um, R Truth would have made in, if that was in WWE. When they have that would have been that would have been just hanging in the loop. That would have been amazing. But regardless, <laughs> the only time I'll say anything nice about WWE on an AEW podcast, but whatever. Um, I think MJF definitely is going to win here. I mean, Jericho loses nothing by losing. Um, what he gains is great storylines going forward. I think from that tag match, which I really enjoyed with with uh, Ortiz and Sammy versus Wardlow and MJF, I think this is – we're seeing the Sammy Guevara face turn right now. And he's going to kick Sammy out, and that's going to happen. <laughs> and then I eventually think that – uh, Jericho is going to get bounced from the inner circle and MJF's going to lead it. And I think, you know, it's going to be really interesting. See, because it seems like Santana is going to be the guy who's going to be like the catalyst to turning everyone towards MJF. There's something with Santana and MJF we have not explored, but he seems to be really cool with, uh, with him coming in. So, yeah. And if that gives Wardlow uh, more opportunities, because I could, I could give or take Hager, honestly. Uh, but yeah, Wardlow has been looking great for him to have more mainstream ex- or more main event exposure would be awesome. So I think there's way more mileage out of MJF winning than uh, Jericho. But this is going to be a really this uh, this will be a really fun match. And I I think MJF every time I see him in the ring, he just he's constantly I think getting better and doing more and showing different facets of what he could do. So yeah, I think this could be really good. And I'm going to go MJF. I like it. And Wardlow, uh, you touched on it, Bill. Low-key, very, very good. Uh, you know, and I like that they're kind of you know keeping him in the background until he has like those stellar matches. I, I think of that match with Luchasaurus. I love, I love the slow burn with him. Does that mean he also joins the inner circle? Does that mean he goes off on his own and does his own thing? I love the possibilities. I um, think like Jericho said he was gonna they were uh, like a like a package. Like package they would both deal. be in it. We'll find out for sure. Uh, Kyle, what are, what are your thoughts on this one? Well, first, for the dinner, obviously, because I love steak. I'm a steak guy. Um, <laughs> that was hilarious with the, the whole, like, uh, temperatures of the steak going back and forth. That was probably uh, – that, that, that sold me right away. But it was great. I mean, I found it very entertaining. Like, if you if you were watching that and you're not a fan, then why actually are you watching professional wrestling? If you can't find any entertainment in that – then you shouldn't be watching wrestling. You could you you should it's like watch something else. Go watch like UFCs available to you, man. Like you, you gotta enjoy these things when they happen in wrestling. Um, I loved it, and it was both their real voices. I don't think a lot of people know that MJF was in drama in high school, and he could actually sing. The guy's got chords, and and Chris Jericho obviously with Fozzie. So th- that's what made it that much better. Like it was authentic, and that's why I appreciate it a lot more. So I, I definitely enjoyed it, and I thought it was it was gold. It was a gold mine. Um, as for the match itself, I'm going against the grain. I'm, I'm picking Jericho for the win in this one, and I don't think MJF is going to join because I think Wardlow is going to cost MJF this this match and, and him joining the inner circle. I don't think M, I don't think Wardlow wants to join the inner circle because of the heat he has with Jake Hager. I don't I don't I don't think he sees it being a good fit. I think he likes what him and MJF have together. And he sees the, as as MJF's losing his head, trying to join the, the inner circle and obviously trying to implode it from within. I'm, that, that's my guess is his ultimate game is to try to like disperse the inner circle. And um, other than that, uh, I think Wardlow is this is gonna it's finally caught up to him. We've seen MJF how he's treated Wardlow up to this point. I think it's finally gonna catch up whether. MJF's yelling at Wardlow throughout the match, and then Wardlow's just finally gonna snap and cost MJF the match. And I think that's going to lead to these two feuding with each other after this. And I think we're going to see a feud finally. We're going to see Wardlow transition finally into the singles role. I think he's I think he's done enough to this point. I know it's not been a lot of matches, but from what I've seen out of him on Dark and Dynamite, I think Wardlow is ready to go. I think he could be a dominant force in AW, whether they pair him up with someone else. Maybe they have someone else in mind as a manager. And, and, and you know, maybe like M- Wardlow debuts him when he's feuding against MJF. So, I mean, this whole thing has been hilarious, obviously with the jacket, the extra, 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 extra large jacket. He got Sammy and and this whole thing has been amazing. Um, I think the match is going to be great. It's not going to be, it's going to be 
again another more entertaining type type of match with both these guys and their their egos clashing together in the ring. Um, it's gonna be great, and it, you got one of the two top heels basically in your company going at it, going at it with each other. So I, I, but I'm sticking against my pick here, and I'm I'm picking Jericho for the win. I love it, man. And I, man, Kyle, get more points here, man. I love what you're saying. Like the payoff here being like Wardlow. Um, you know, all the focus is on MJF and Jericho here, but the ultimate payoff going to Wardlow. I like that a lot. Um, you're going to hate this reference, Bill. I, I could see him coming out as like a Roman Reigns type um, over the years uh, for sure. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, th- I think they, they showed him in that one promo before Adam, yeah. his Adam Ro- Page Ro- match. Road to Dynamite. It was one of he, those videos. Yeah. They really were like, yeah, this guy's something special. I could see them. Yeah. Maybe they, them getting rid of him because there could only be one muscle guy. And then I would love to see a Sammy Wardlow, Wardlow duo. That would be not like, He's Sammy's heavy, but like those two guys as a team, that could be amazing. But it's yeah, a dynamic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you you guys hit it right on the head. You talk about the dynamic within the inner circle. Um, you know, there's a lot of times over the past couple of months where they haven't really been together and doing their own thing, as we're seeing uh, with Sammy right now taking on Matt Hardy in a was it another Ultimate Deletion match? Uh, elite. Where, elite. Uh, elite. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Excuse me, the Elite <laughs> Deletion. Uh, <laughs> Match. This is very interesting to me. Hardy, you would think, ultimately has the home field advantage, if you will. I'm expecting a full cinematic match, a lot of fun. Um, I believe that last match they had it all out. That's where yes. Hardy legit got. I, you know, I had some friends <laughs> that were actually there and were telling me like what was going on while like they cut away and stuff. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. So Sammy, obviously, no, did Matt win that one? Who won that? What match? The uh, all, the all out match where he Matt he, did he, Matt, Matt actually set. did yeah. all the, he knocked him off the thing and then it so came. wasn't it last man standing and then they counted yeah. ten it was, last man, it was last man standing yeah yeah, yeah. so then I'll uh, based on that I'll I'll go Sammy for this one even though Hardy has the I was gonna go Matt Hardy with the home field advantage but and I know there's been some frustration on his on his part with his usage but I'm gonna go Sammy here um you know riding some momentum after coming back. We will throw it to Bill. Um, hmm, interesting. I think Matt Hardy's going to win. I think uh, after everything that's happened, this feud has been so snake bitten by so many things. Um, I can't see Matt Hardy losing um, at the Hardy compound uh, unless he was fighting Jeff. And um, I think this ultimately is what, uh, basing off of, yes, he's got to, every time I mention Jeff Hardy, he's got to do the thing with the hands. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> it has to happen. Yeah, I know. It just totally threw me up. Um, because I think this is the reason he gets he gets chucked from the inner circle. There just they, you know, MJF. They start whispering in his ear. Oh, he, he can't win the big one. He can't win. He can't win. And he's like, you know, this this is the the the, the domino that falls for Sammy to be kicked out of the inner circle. So I think, uh, or some people say, Sammy, if he goes into that uh, that lake. Some people do have a change of character. So who knows? We'll see. Uh, Bill, you're making me want to. I I won't change my pick. I don't know. I I can't. It's like reincarnation. I don't remember what the lake of reincarnation. Uh, You're making me want to change. They just got that boxing kangaroo back. That's all I want. (laughs) Dude. Oh, man. That's that's good stuff, Bill. Nicole, your thoughts on this one. So. Storyline wise, I'm thinking Hardy wins only because I do agree with what um, Bill said. They are at the compound home field advantage. And I do like the theory of, oh, if Sammy loses and MJF does join inner circle, there are whispers of, hey, Sammy can't win, blah, blah, blah. So then Sammy gets kicked out. So I'm thinking Hardy, but I think Hardy is going to make Sammy look really good. I just like the fact with AEW, the older, more veteran wrestlers, they give more chances to the younger talent and they showcase, they basically show them off, which I really, really like. So I'm very excited to see what um, Sammy and Matt do with this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, I want to change my answer because I like what you're saying. (laughs) I won't, Bill. I won't change it. I won't change it. I am doing another podcast later, so you might hear a different uh, answer there, but I I (laughs) digress. <laughs> oh, that's a that's there's wrong. that there's, wrong. There's, 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 wrong. wrong 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 wrong. <laughs> uh, Kyle, we didn't get to you on this one, right? 
No. Um, Go ahead. He's like, it's I'm okay. just hosting the podcast. You're going to be on next, pal. It's fine. Yeah, it's all yeah. right. Yeah, I'll remember that. Don't worry. <laughs> There's a lot going yeah, on. You got heat with Kyle. You already uh, have um, heat with Tiff. Join, the, join the club. But the Elite Deletion match, I mean, it speaks for itself. We're going to get an awesome cinematic match. We got the production team of AEW with the creative mind of Matt Hardy. You're just asking for a gold mine there. Um, I think both guys, again, they have a lot of hate. They have big vendettas against each other. They're, they're going to go in this uh, with full guns of blazing. This is obviously going to be the, or hopefully going to be the the end of this feud. And we're going to see some stories play off both characters after this. Um, I like what uh, the, the two theories I just heard there with, you know, if Sammy doesn't win this match, there's those whispers. I really like that. Um, I really think Matt Hardy takes the victory here as well. I think Sammy Guevara has been distracted lately because of what's happening with the MJF stuff. I think that's going to cause him to, you know, kind of lose his mind in this match and, and not be very focused for it. And I think it'll be a huge factor for Sammy uh, to uh, uh, lose this match with his focus not being 100% into it. And then I think it'll be also a good way to, for Matt Hardy to put over Sammy because Matt Hardy is not also here in AW2 release his creative mind that he's been getting has you know has been held back since tna but it's also going to be he's also here to put over younger people that he wants to put over and sammy is one of them that's why he's been working with him for the last what is it like five months now they've been working yep. together so he's got a lot of faith in sammy as one of the you know he is one of the big future guys of this company so for him to include him in this elite deletion match is, is huge for sammy and his big props to sammy that you know matt hardy believes you enough to want to do this type of match because he's he's we've seen how good these are have been in the past so i can't wait for it i'm sticking with matt hardy though i think he does come out on top and uh sammy i guess uh, i'll stick i like that prediction the the whispers of him uh, not being able to get it done and that leads to his ultimate uh face turn i like that very very interesting yeah you you guys did a lot better than me on that one but I, i'll <laughs> stick with my pick bill don't worry uh, trust your gut that's what you keep telling everybody Oh, yes, that you're not wrong, man. Um, I'm going to throw a curveball at you guys. Before we get to Omega taking on Paige, because I think that is that could go either way. We'll get into that in a bit. Let's go to a match that I think, I mean, I don't know if you guys agree, is an easy pick for the winner here. No disrespect, just for the outcome. Uh, we'll go right to the AEW world title match first. It is an I quit match between... Mox taking on, of course, uh, our good friend Eddie Kingston, uh, you know, arguably the best promo in the game. If you think about it, out of how many matches had Kingston had in AEW, how many of them have been title matches for the world title, for the TNT title? Uh, look at that resume. Um, and again, no disrespect. I'm just surprised to see him right at the top uh, of the line for, for that title uh, more than once. So great promo, as we mentioned. Um I did. I love the promo. I love the passion. You knew it'd be good. Um, some real emotion, some real maybe behind the scenes kind of stuff. You could feel it. Uh, the part I didn't like was we're kind of left to kind of fill in the blanks ourselves. Maybe that's a good thing, though. Maybe that's good storytelling. Um, for, from what I gather from the promo, Bill's looking at me weird, man. From, I don't from know what, what I saw, what the, the blanks are, right? I'm not, I'm not following. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get, I'll, I'll pass it or I don't want to get into it too much. From, from what I, I, I understand. Okay, yeah, there, there was some personal stuff going on and it involved family, but we didn't like quite know all the details. It was details. hard to hear through his grinning and when their noses were mashing together, creating awkwardness. Like, oh, it was well, hard I to guess, make out some things. I, 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 well, I guess I'm because I've known Eddie, who Eddie Kingston and John Moxley have been for like 20, 15, 20 years, and like, but not they, everybody. Does yeah, know. so yeah, for me, I was like, oh yeah, like yeah, they've known it. They wrestled in CZW together. They they were, went up and down the roads forever. You know what I mean? And like they they had they were super close in real life. So to me, I was like, oh yeah, I totally get that. But if you don't know that, then there you go. Yeah, yeah, but like I said, like you, you could see the chemistry, but again, there were some some blanks that I need, need to be filled in. But again, it, it was also very brilliant and a, and a great promo. Uh, long story short, I, I see, you know, Kingston quitting here. I, I hate hate to see him, you know, quit in a match like this, but Mox is holding on to that title in, in this one. I think that's an easy pick. I think we're all going to pick Mox. Uh, that's just where I'm going. Kyle, what do you got? This is going to be a very intense match. If it's going to be like anything we just seen on Wednesday, we're in for like emotions running high from us fans and through those two in this match. It's going to be very intense. It's going to be brutal. 
we've seen what Kington, Kingston has done in matches so far. I think we're going to get another level in this case, especially an I quit match with two guys who, again, like what uh, Bill said, grew up in CCW. They're going to, I think they're going to bring a lot of aspects to that into this match. We're going to see a lot of gory type of intense spots in this match being an I quit match. You're going to do whatever it takes. Like you saw him like say to his fate, like the weird, like what made it awkward for me is like, you're going to have to kill me and like kill. And like, he's like begging him to kill him. And I'm like, okay, this is like, we're treading some weird waters here. I know it's, yeah. it's wrestling, you know, it's, it's, it's promo, it's hype, but I'm like, okay, like this is getting very, very intense and, and making it uh, what you were saying with the gaps thing. I'm like, okay, what's, is there backstage stuff that we're not seeing? It's here? not just it's, me. Like, okay, yeah. yeah, it's not just me. Okay, <laughs> but uh, as Bill said, like there's a history between them, and you know, obviously they they agreed to go out there and do something like that, and it was great. It was awesome television. So I'm expecting a lot of brutal stuff and emotional things going through this match. But I agree with you, uh, Rob, that Moxley is going to retain the championship here. He has to be the one for Kenny to take the belt off of because I again that's kind of I'm kind of like playing ahead here. I I, I foresee Kenny eventually winning the title belt and he's going to take it off a guy like John Moxley, even though it'd be, it would in a way be cool if Eddie Kingston had the belt and, and, and Omega took it off him. I think they could do something cool with that, but I, I still foresee uh, John Moxley being the one, but this, this is going to be very, very intense. Uh, I, I don't know if a lot of people are going to be prepared for this emotionally. Like a lot of the John Moxley fans I have on my Twitter that are, uh, about to see probably another side of him that I don't think they've seen before. If they're depending on where in the timeline they started watching and cheering on John Moxley. Um, if you're coming from WWE, I mean, good luck. These two are about to throw another page out there. That's going to be, uh, I can't, I can't, I'm losing my words for it. It's going to be intense. So sticking with my pick here, Moxley to retain, uh, going to be an emotional one. Yeah. This ain't uh, no lunatic fringe on this one, Bill, your thoughts. <laughs> Um, this, I don't know if we're going to go to the full gear lights out match that we had last year, where that took a lot of criticism, the oh, death, match, there. <laughs> the death match between yeah. Kenny and, and Moxie, which I'm sure was amazing. I got Moxie. yelled at by Tiff, by the way. She's like, this is not a death match. And she, she like, I, I said <laughs> death match and she lost it on me while we were oh, in the stands we there. I'm like, okay, I'm yeah, sorry. Does she know, does she know about those things called Texas death matches, which yeah. aren't like, you know. Sticking syringes through. I think she just pisses there was any light tube. She's like, no, this is not a death match. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> I'm just gonna. So yeah, we love you, Tiff. So many things I could say. Anyway, I don't think we're gonna get to that level. I think this is gonna to be a um, one of my favorite wrestling matches of all time. I have two: is Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio from oh, Halloween right. Havoc, and Ric Flair, Terry Funk, New York Knockout, I Quit match. And I think that. The physicality, brutality, and intensity that Flair and Funk had, where literally Terry Funk almost got them thrown off TV by putting a plastic bag over Ric Flair's head at one yeah, point. That. Uh, and that was in 1989-90. Um, Pile drove him through a table. Tables were never really used on TV. Like, that was the, how advanced and cutting edge that, that feud was. That This has the same vibe, the same atmosphere of two guys who want to rip each other apart. And they are going to go to this Eddie Kingston, John Moxley obsession with 90s Japanese wrestling of just beating the piss out of each other. This is going to be two guys throwing hands. Yeah, there might be, you know, hey, we saw thumbtacks with with uh, Eddie Kingston and Cody Rhodes. But like, and there, I'm sure there'll be some plunder tables and, and you know, cables and all sorts of stuff. I don't know if we're going to maybe even expose a ring board, but like. I don't think we're going to see bar. We're not going to go deathmatch style or deathmatch light. I'll I can just see say. the barbed bat that he's been he's he's been known to have. I can see yeah, Moxley having but that. I, I just want, but I think we're going to see literally two men crying in the ring at one point. Yeah, I think we're going to have man tears in this match, like two guys who uh, who who do care for each other, but this their obsession with pro wrestling uh, is going to take over. And I think Eddie Kingston has cut some of the best promos in wrestling. I mean, geez, I remember July 4th of this year, he was in the middle of a field in Southwest New Jersey talking about selling his boots off to pay his rent and calling out Cody. And now he's main eventing an AEW pay-per-view, which is one of the craziest stories, um, I've ever heard in wrestling, you know, so quickly. And, uh, this is going to be brutality personified in a match. And I, I, I just can't wait 
to watch it unfold. This is the best. I think this is the best build to any Moxley match ever. Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, whatever feud he's done, these two promos have been the best. Mo Eddie Kingston's line saying, I told my mother the reason you don't have a grandchild is because of this and points to the belt. And I was like, son of a bitch. That is the <laughs> craziest thing. That is like, but it's so true. It's so outlandish, but it's so true. And that's why it resonated. It's been great. It's going to be intense. Do our, I don't know where the the days line up. Does if it, if it's going to be this intense and this emotional, and they're going to bring a lot of personal stuff into it, are we finally going to maybe have Renee Paquette at ringside watching this match? Nah, she's going to be she's going to be like having a glass of wine, just like <laughs> cupping up with new Coke folks stuff. No, I mean, maybe, maybe, but I also think that we're destined for an Eddie Kingston pack feud oh. for sure because he was. Eddie's voice was all over that vignette. And I was oh, yeah. like, give me that. And I told someone this. The day that either Moxley, if, if it's in front of a live crowd, the day either Moxley or Kingston comes to the other's aid, the place will come unglued because of this match. Wow. I love it. Yeah. you. I, got, I love seeing you. I'm thinking about this, guys. This election <laughs> sucks. I love seeing <laughs> I love seeing your guys' genuine uh, excitement for enthusiasm for this match. Hashtag man tears. Hashtag me and Nuna is watching Rocky three last night. Uh, Nicole, what do you think? What do you think about this? Best one? brother. <laughs> Everyone hit it on the head. I'm thinking Moxley wins. That's really it. I know it's going to be intense. It's going to be emotional. It isn't going to be death match caliber like we saw with Omega and Moxley last year. Am I thinking he brings in the barbed wire bat? Maybe. Do I think he's going to use it on Kingston? I don't know because of emotions and stuff like that. But I'm thinking he does bring in the bat at some point. But it's going to be intense. There's going to be some blood. And I'm super excited to see this this match. And yeah. He's got his head there. And he's going to like swing at it and just stops himself. Oh, I can see that. I yeah. can see that for sure. This, this is going to be some great storytelling here. I agree. But I think, uh, you know, as we all said, Mox retains here. And, uh, you know, Kyle, you kind of touched on your thoughts in, in, on this one. And I say I didn't mean to swerve you guys, but I did save this one for last because I could see either one of these guys winning personally. Uh, you know, the fact that Omega has gotten that new entrance, kind of that new attitude, both of them a little bit, um, kind of tells me something on Omega's end. Uh, so I can see that match. He has taken on Moxley before. Um, has Page Page has challenged for the title before, early on? No, it didn't happen. He was in the to he was in the he and Jericho fought to be the first champion. That's what it was. Yeah, right. But that he's was. also never fought Moxley, to my knowledge. See, and that's another thing to take into account. Did I, he fight Moxley? Do we want to see Omega and Moxley again? I mean, the answer is yes, but this is a different circumstance for the title. <sighs> I'm having a tough time here, Kyle. You you touched on your thoughts already. You want to just kind of elaborate on your thoughts on why you picked Omega? Well, I'm it's obviously a homer pick for me because I'm a huge Omega fan. So my bias is showing hard here that uh, I'm going for Omega. But as for this feud, the storybook continues to be written. I don't think I and I don't think it's over here. The, the, this storybook is not finished until it it has Hangman defeating Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship. That is the end goal. That is the end game with this feud. Yep. Uh, wow. Hangman and Kenny make it to wow. the finals of this AEW World Title Tournament. Um, winner will receive a shot of whoever the champion is going to be. The Cinderella video was hilarious <laughs> on Dynamite this week. It plucked at some heartstrings of some people. I know that I was almost shedding a man tear. Um, <laughs> just because that, just because of that song, it, it just it's so perfect. Um, Suppose they're gonna do more of that. They said they're gonna start using more licensed songs. Yeah, yeah. So I was part of the the press conference today, and I, I love that Cody actually answered one of my questions. It was amazing. I didn't think I was gonna get chosen, but uh, Hangman uh, still in his drunken phase, his drinking phase. I don't know when this is gonna end. Um, I think it'll Some maybe of end. It takes a long time. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna end on his road to the the aw title match against kenny omega he's gonna finally look in the mirror and say like i gotta get myself in shape i gotta start you know uh getting my shit together and and, and finally get ready for this match because i want to win the title so i think that's gonna we're gonna see kind of that phase out maybe he has like a celebratory drink when he wins the title belt just to bring that back a little bit maybe if there's fans hopefully cross fingers can't really hope by uh, february with the things that are in the world but if there was fans, he'd share a beer with someone. But uh, Kenny slowly but surely maybe turning into the cleaner. It's it's teasing the hell out of me. I 
want full heel Kenny as a cleaner back so much, but again, we don't know with what's going on in his head if he wants to be the cleaner again or all are all these little entrances he's doing in the in the in the Twitter or the Instagram posts that he teases all the time. Is he just messing with our heads? I kind of think that we're gonna get that entrance and more at full gear. Fantasy wise, I hope he comes out as the full cleaner you know jacket silver hair glasses the whole shebang at, at full gear and that's when he makes his debut for or i guess not debut but uh the debut of the cleaner in AEW for omega the match is going to be very good like i said earlier i think they give these guys a lot of time i can see it pushing the 30 minute mark and it's going to be very emotional very intense these two are exceptional wrestlers and they have the chemistry together to put on a, a, a probably one of the matches of the year potential so I have Kenny Omega winning and sticking with my pick that eventually it's going to lead to Kenny winning the belt revolution, or maybe they push to double or nothing of next year. That's when hangman will finally take the belt off of Kenny Omega and hangman's journey towards that title belt will finally uh, come through. Wow, man, you sold me. Uh, And I think also (laughs) that entrance change, um, that was big for me. That told me a lot, that attitude change that we're seeing. I'm going to go Omega. Nicole, your thoughts. I'm also going to go Omega. I really like the idea that he is slowly becoming the cleaner. But what I would like to see is down the road, if he does challenge Moxley for the title, I would love to see Moxley versus Omega as the cleaner. I think they would put on an absolute clinic. And then down the road, while Omega is the cleaner, then him and Hangman go at it. And then Hangman takes the title off of him. But that's down the road for now but i'm leaning more towards omega for saturday but i think that they're going to put on a fantastic match and i'm thinking it's going to go 30 minute a 30 minute emotional match yeah i would it, love i would please. love if i don't know what his contract situation's like i i, I haven't paid i haven't been paying attention to him what he's been doing lately eventually we we saw that everyone knows a story if they know between omega and the bullet club and who who came through and helped them come back and see the light again? Kota Ibushi, the Golden Lovers. I'd love to see that in freaking AEW. I would eventually I mean, they could get their hands it, and yeah. feed the money to, to Kota Ibushi and we get a Golden Lover story in AEW. Hell yeah, take my freaking money. Take all of it. I would love to see that. Those two we would, and then those two go through the tag team division, maybe win the tag team belts eventually. I'd love to see the Golden Lovers in AEW, but again, it's big Kenny Omega fan that's my fantasy inner self talking here but uh that'll be cool uh, I love the enthusiasm and, and as you guys touched on we're, we're seeing this change in the attitude of Kenny will we see the cleaner will we see what happens and Kenny's kind of doing one of these one of his last matches we saw how focused he was how no nonsense he was he just totally just got that win in record time and we see hangman's kind of not whatever but he's kind of on, on that slope a little bit you know um you know they're obviously playing up the drinking and all that. So we could see him kind of uh, fall before he rises again. So that should be very interesting. And I like what you said, Kyle, about them meeting in the future, ultimately for that title. So I, I like the chess game that you guys are playing, thinking three moves ahead at all times. Bill, take us home. Yeah, I'm going to um, kind of be fall lockstep here. I think Kenny's going to win. And I think the cleaner, I don't know if he's going to come out as the cleaner for this one, but I think, the cleaner persona is going to grow and grow and grow and grow till the box of feud. We're in this weird chapter in AEW. I always looked at in between pay-per-views as the, a chapter. And I feel like we've been in a very messy one and a lot of storylines. And I think the big clearing of a lot of things will be Kenny's emergence. I mean, the Bucks even said this is going to be a big year for Kenny Omega. Kenny asserting his dominance as the guy in AEW, I think is going to clear up a lot of stories. And, um, I actually think Hangman's going to challenge Omega at one point and lose. Then oh. he's going to have to rebuild himself. And he he's going to have to rebuild himself. Yep, tear himself down and rebuild himself up. And he's going to, and in one year, he will win the title. Mm-hmm. Or maybe if he doesn't, but maybe he has to realize, maybe he loses along the way to somebody and he can't get to that match and he has to put down the drink and he has to refocus and this long, big baby face build for hangman who's already over huge. And we get a year from now that hangman beats Kenny for the title. I think Kenny's last like serious 
full on like great match was probably against Pac before Revolution in that Iron Man match. Oh, amazing match. That I love that that's match still so sticking to this day. That's my match of the year, and it's tough because that went up against my other match of the year, which was the tag team match at Revolution with Kenny and Hangman in the Bucks. But that one still to me is my number one match of the year so far. It was so freaking good. Wow. You you guys absolutely knocked it out of the park here. Um, th- this was really a lot of fun, guys. And like I said, this was one of the hardest predictions panel we had, um, but it's going to be a stellar pay-per-view, I believe, Saturday night. It's going to be awesome. Uh, before we get out of here, guys, we always got to do the shameless promo. Bill, tell everyone about a little website called thepopbreak.com. Yes, I am the editor-in-chief of thepopbreak.com. We have been around for 11 years. We cover the best in television, film, music, movies, comic books, and we will have a new section debuting uh, next week called Digital Trends. We're going to be talking to YouTube personalities and podcasters, so I'm sure you guys will be hearing from us. Um, But if you want to follow me, I am at BodkinWrites, W-R-I-T-E-S, on Twitter. I mostly just talk about wrestling and sometimes some political things, mostly me going, ah! Um, (laughs) Uh, we are uh, Pop Break on Twitter is at popbreak.com, all spelled out, uh, forward slash popbreak.com, all spelled out on Facebook, at the Pop Break on Instagram. I am the co host of the Socially Distanced podcast, which <laughs> drops every single. I am not wrong. That's where exactly where it is called. <laughs> I co host it with Al Manorino, my managing editor. It is available on Spotify, Google, Anchor, and Apple Podcast drops every Friday. We're doing a brand new series where we review The Mandalorian every single week. I am also a special guest on. The TV Break podcast, which is on the Pop Break TV uh, feed on those same platforms, Spotify, Anchor, Google, and uh, I don't know, whatever I said before, same thing. Uh, we have podcast a ton of different platforms. Podcast platforms, yeah, that, <laughs> and we have like a ton of great podcasts under that banner. And um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, and I write every week on thepopbreak.com. And, uh, you know, I'm a pop culture podcast guy. And, uh, I'm going to have a five-year-old bust through this door in about a minute. So that's my plugs. Love it, man. And you are a pillar of the show. Hashtag dad and sinks. Uh, we love you, Bill. Thanks for coming on. And uh, I want to talk to Nicole a little bit about Big Mama's Dog Training LLC. I've seen some of the videos on Instagram. Uh, you are so good with these dogs. They do amazing things. Tell everyone how they can get in touch with you if they need a dog that needs training. And also tell us about that great merch where some of the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. So I offer in-home private lessons. I service all of Monmouth County and parts of Ocean, Mercer, and Middlesex County. If you guys want to go to BigMamasDogTraining.com, you can send me a submission form through there. I also have Facebook and Instagram. You can shoot me a message through there as well. I am selling stickers, magnets, and I just got in keychains that are absolutely adorable. Uh, Some of the proceeds from that merch will be donated directly to the American Cancer Society. And just to let everybody know, at the end of every month, I do donate 5% of my profits to the American Cancer Society in honor of my big mama, who I unfortunately lost to cancer back in 2017. I'm buying a sticker now. Yeah, you have. Here it is. I'm giving everyone. I don't know if you guys can see it. We're going, we're going, we're going. It's up there. You can see the it's the there Bernie it with the with the uh, title belt, which is like the coolest sticker. Oh, There's also the magnet. Awesome. The magnet is on uh, the Good Brothers fridge over here as well. So uh, thank you for doing all that, Nicole, and continued success, Kyle. Who I'll see in a little bit, man. Tell us a little bit about something. I think you have a podcast, something to do with all the so. wrestling no, think, or something, something like that. We just kind of just sit around and chat. I think I think we put it in podcast form. I think yeah. <laughs> it gets out there somehow. No, Get but that uh, promo. Yeah, please. <laughs> Uh, Rob here is going to be joining me on the All Elite Podcast, which is uh, one of the many uh, podcasts that we offer on the No Holds Bar Network, which myself and my co-host Tiffany own. Um, she does a couple of other podcasts on there that has to do with independent wrestling. She does indie talks. Uh, she does Under the Under the Ropes, which uh, she interviews uh, a lot of independent wrestlers. Um, you guys want to check those out, learn their backstory before they become big. She's interviewed already a couple of people who have already are transcending currently right now into bigger companies so you guys want to check out all those episodes she does really good work with those but yeah as for the ollie podcast myself i host it co-host with tiffany we talk about aw 
anything AEW, just a friendly discussion. You can come watch myself and Tiff argue about things sometimes. We like to say our heel personas come out when we do argue about certain things, and it's a really good time. We're available on YouTube. If you just search up the No Holds Bar Network, you can find the All Elite Podcast. We do all our podcasts in video version, most of it live when the internet does cooperate with us. And sometimes if we don't, we just post it after. Um, you can find us on audio po- podcast platforms, any of them really. If you just search up the No Holds Bar Network, you'll find us. But uh, yeah, Rob will be joining us. We're going to be doing a... Uh, uh, I guess another <laughs> a full gear uh, predictions video. Maybe I'll change some of my answers. Rob will probably have some of the different answers, but uh, definitely going to have all of to a get know uh, who the grill is. Uh, uh, they are. Yeah, oh, I'm not <laughs> maybe I'll, I might have that idea. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, we'll see what Tiffany has to say. She always uh, has some spicy comments about certain wrestlers, so it's going to be awesome. To see Mostly that. that why private party didn't win the tag team titles like six or times Orange or Cassidy. Orange Cassidy. Yeah, there, <laughs> there it is. I'm re- I'm ready to Trent. go. <laughs> I'm to, yeah. I, I I can hashtag list of husbands, but uh, I did get the extra large coffee tonight, Kyle. So I'm ready to go. And guys, yeah, um, and, and thank you uh, for putting up with us, uh, silly Americans, Kyle. I very much appreciate that. And uh, thank you for joining us, guys. Um, this was a lot of fun. And like we always say here on the BCP, everyone stay safe, stay positive, take care of each other. We're out. Peace.